So what I'm doing in this video is sharing with you a full tutorial on how I created this set of stairs. It's probably one of the most asked questions that I get is how do I create a set of stairs that are fully parametric? Um, and so this is an efficient way to create a set of stairs, which is the U shape. We start with the tread height. Then we create the tread length, number of treads, so we can increase or decrease this number. Then the width of the stairs. And then also if we want to create a gap in between them, whether we want none or a little bit of a gap. And all of these parameters here are tied together so at the end, we can create an array that can be arrayed vertically, and it can create a tower. So this is a very useful tutorial for those of you who want to create stairs, who want to get into parametric design, and learn some techniques that you can apply to many other of your designs. This is a very practical design that does not include like crazy architecture. People have sometimes a misconception that Parametric design has to be for crazy architecture, but it can be for something practical like this. So if you want to get a hold of this script, check out my website, capettidavid.com. There you can download this script and get a hold of other resources as well. So thank you very much for being here, and let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is bring in a point and that's going to be what we'll move to create the tread. So we'll go here, double click, and we'll go to construct point. Now at this point, I like to route it through a point component. This way we can move the location of our stairs. I'll go to point. I'll use this empty point component. Now I'll route it through here. And now we can get started by moving this point up so we'll go to a move component. Now we'll go motion Z because we want it to go up and the height is going to be six inches. So if that's going to be our minimum, we can do this. Um, let's say four less than six less than 12. That way you can create a slider that starts at 4, it's set at 6, and it goes all the way to 12. Great. Now let's move this point that we moved up in the x direction for the length. So here we'll go to move again. We can bring in a move component. I'll just copy this one, so I'll slide it, tap Alt. I'll plug in the geometry into the geometry input, and the motion is going to be in the x direction. And the length is going to be 12.5, but if we want a custom slider, we can do that again. We'll go 10, less than 12.5, which means it's going to have a decimal point, and then less than 16. So at this point, now we've moved it in the X direction, and we can label these as red height. I like to use caps, but it's just preference, red height. And tread length. And what's interesting about this is that everything is based off of this, because the length of this, that's going to be arrayed, but also the width of it. So the dimensions are determined by this module. So now what we need to do is connect those points. So I'll go here to polyline and start by plugging in the initial point and then holding down shift, I can add more inputs. So I'm adding the point that I moved up and then the one that I moved to the right. And this, so what that means is that this point 
is constrained by this one. So this would be the parent object of this, which means that if I move this up, it moves up the tread length. But when I move the tread length, it's not going to move the height. So now you're seeing kind of the logic of how things work here from left to right, and also tying in information from one parameter before to the one, the current one. So at this point, with this polyline, now we need to array it up horizontally and vertically. So what we need to do is create the vector, or actually there are different ways we can do this. We can array it in the X direction and then vertically, and that will give us the array. What I like to do is to create the vector that is going to be the movement. So if I go create a line segment between this point and this point, that is the direction that I want to move it. So I'll go here to line, start at this point, and end at this point. Now we have a vector and a length. So if you think about the array being based off of this, if you just copy this module from this corner to this corner, you can create an array. So what we're going to do is create a move component. We're going to move this tread in this direction. But it only creates one. We want to create multiple ones. So how do we do this? We'll go to amplitude. What amplitude does is it's going to create a vector from a curve or from a line segment that's a vector. So we'll use this line. We'll use that as the vector input. The amplitude is going to be the length of that. But before that, we can plug this in here and see that if I plug in this as the length, it will do that again just once. Now we want to do that multiple times. So what we need to do is create a series that steps by this length of that line. We'll create five. We'll just create five for now, five treads. And now we can use this, which are five numbers that step by five or step by 18, and we can use that as the input. So now with this series component, we can array this because the amplitude, the direction is going to be determined by this vector. And the step is going to be determined by the length of that. So it's this multiplied by 10. And that's how it creates that set of stairs. So this is just a vertical and horizontal array of the tread. Now what we need to do is extrude it to create the length or the width of the stairs. So what we'll do is we'll take this, but before that we need to join it to turn this into just one line. So we'll go here to join, join curves, we'll have one polyline. Now we can extrude this in the y direction. And we'll go to 48 four feet. So this gives you a visual of how the stairs are going to look. And this is going to be determined by the array. So if I decrease the array, you'll see it updated here. Cool. So now that we have this joined and extruded, let's create the landing here. Because what we need to do is go to our curves here, which is the polyline that creates the entire set of stairs. We'll go to endpoint. We'll be using the endpoint or 
yeah, we'll be using the endpoint and moving it in the X direction. What this does is take that endpoint from this polyline and move it in the X direction by 60 or five feet to create the landing. So the landing is going to be a line segment between the endpoint and the start point. Now we can extrude this in the Y direction And if we extrude it by the same amount as our treads, or the width of it, the stairs, we can do that, but we can also do that. I'll create a relay here. And so what I did here is I basically moved this over here just so I can see where the wire connects and double clicked on the wire that creates a relay. And now I can go here and do times two so what happens is when you do times two or multiply by whatever whatever number you plugged in is going to be b and you can use a or 48 times two and use that as your landing why because we're going to have another one here that's going to turn around and go up so you want it to be twice as much but you can also add so let me show you that. We'll go to addition, and this will create a gap in between the stairs. So we'll add 24. So now this will be additional to just the landing um, for the stairs being here and then the stairs being here again. So hopefully that makes sense. This is just additional. And it will make more sense later on as we go because that will create a gap in between the stairs. Okay, so at this point, we've got our treads. So this is the height, it's too much. We'll go to six. Length is going to be 12. Ten. Uh, 48. So let's label these. Okay, stay with. Landing length. This is additional or mm, there's gap. Okay, now what we need to do is take this extrusion and create a solid. The reason why we have to do that is because this solid is going to tie to the stairs and also tie the stairs going up. So what we'll do is take this extrusion and extrude it up and down. So one way to do this is move this down, so motion, Z, negative, it's going to be the same as the tread. So we'll go over here to tread height and use the Z vector already to move this down. Now we're going to extrude it by twice as much. Extrude this one. Which direction? Well, 
we already know which direction this is going down by the same amount that we want to go up so i'll double click here to create a relay and i'll do times two to extrude it up by two twice as much so technically we didn't have to plug in any slider the reason for that is because all of that has been determined by the tread so whatever the tread height is it's going to be this is going to be twice as much the height okay now let's turn this set of stairs into a solid the way to do this is we'll go to the endpoints and we want to move this down by six inches and this down by six inches so we'll go to move and we'll plug in both this one and i'll create a new one plug in the endpoint the motion it's going to be down by six but here we have positive six here we have negative six so either we bring this all the way around or we create another relay over here so we can kind of intersect the wires and now here it's going to be in the negative direction so we set down Okay, now we're going to connect the dots. So we're going to go between this point, this point, this point, and this point, and then join it with this curve. And then we'll have a solid that we can extrude instead of just this polyline because it's just a surface. Okay, now we'll go to polyline. We'll start with the start point this one this one so i'm holding down shift and just adding more inputs and then the end points here okay now let's join them together so i will have to take this and that join them together so join curves between this one and this one i'll flatten the input and move all of this down here because we're going to now replace this one not only join it but we have to turn it into a surface so boundary surface first and then extrude that as a solid now i'll disable the preview on all of this cool now we're going to take this as the module bring it to the other side and then the set of stairs going up to the next side so that will finish our module which then can be arrayed vertically but this will be a very like versatile idea of what you can do with grasshopper it doesn't have to be crazy architecture it could be um, very practical things that you can use every day when you program them it allows you to save a lot of time in the future because we can bring this up and if you have a project and you already know the floor to floor height we can set the parameters here and just bring that in. Um, even if it's just as an idea, it'll save you enough time uh, to where you don't have to do it over and over again. So let's now do that. Let's take this and finish the other side. All right, so there are different ways of doing this, but the way that I want to do it here is just moving this in the Y direction 
we can also mirror it from the center of this because if we do have an additional offset like this then i want the center of that to be where it gets mirrored so now we'll take this we'll create a point at the center so we'll bring in an area component and then here in the middle we'll create an x z plane now we can take that reference and we can mirror off of that plane the geometry that we created here I don't have to disable preview on that but now with this we have two sets of stairs that even that on its own could be a design right where if you just increase this landing or whatever you can have like a u-shaped kind of set of stairs or even u-shaped like this and then having a set of stairs going up but for now I'll just make this a small gap 24. the mirrored set of stairs now we need to do this rotate it by 180 degrees so what we need to do is create a box or bounding box around the set of stairs so I can create a center point so an area point because sometimes the centroid does not coincide with the exact center that you want to rotate from so that's why I like to use this box and the centroid now here we can rotate using the centroid as the plane and the geometry as the input we'll change the angle to degrees and then go here to 180. now we can disable preview here so at this point now we have it rotated but we need to move this up so how do we know how much we're moving it up that is because we do have here the set number of treads 10 so if we multiply 10 by the number of height so the height of it is going to be six inches. That'll give us the height from the bottom to the top because that's how many treads we have. And this is the tread height. So now we can use this number. To move this up. But we need a little bit more and you'll see what I mean. So we'll go to move this geometry up in the Z direction. And that actually does work. So I thought I might have to add, or no, it doesn't. Think about it. This is flush here. It actually has to go up by six more inches. So this is where I'll go like this. Bring this over bring in an addition it is 10 times 6 plus 6. i'll use the 6 from b create a relay so i'll use 6 so 60 plus 6 and use that as the input so technically we didn't use any numbers because we already knew all of the numbers we knew the tread height length the location of our uh, landing so now we can disable the preview here and you see that we have a set of stairs that is pretty clean and it's a solid we can also do boolean union and so if you thought it was a little bit weird to have this extended down well you it's necessary to create a ledger now what I can do is just take this bottom one 
and subtract the bottom part because yes the board is going to go to the ground here and it would be subtracted by that but i didn't want to do that until i rotated it and put it here because that's necessary for the array so the only thing that i see here that would be next is creating let's say the landing here at the beginning and creating a landing here at the top so we can do the exact same trick that we used for creating this is we're going to be moving it in the opposite direction so let's do this so we'll be moving a point in the negative x direction and then extruding it up and down just like this so what i need to do is copy all of this so i'll move this up tap alt The motion is going to be in the opposite direction. So I'll go to a negative component and I'll plug in the X negative here. And now I'll plug in the point is going to be our start point. now we've created this line segment that needs to be extruded in the same direction like this so if i add this as the input see if that works no it actually adds some things up here so what i'll do is i'll copy this plug this one in which will extrude it in the same direction and then moving it doing this again so copy these two plug this in and disable the preview here so we had that work done as well We're just rearranging it with a different direction. Or this one. Okay, great. Now at this point, this is up and down. So it was just to extrude it down. So in that case, we don't need to move it. It's going up. We'll go here down times two. Cool. Now let's create the array because now we have the information we need. First thing I'm going to move is going to be this because once I move this, then I know the floor to floor height. And once I know the floor to floor height, then I can array it. So I'll move this. up in the Z direction. Now let's think about this for a second. It's going to be this height and this height times two plus the six inches plus six inches here. So it's six inches times two and the tread height times two. So the height is going to be 60 plus this times two. And then we'll go here in the Z direction. And I'll move this 
up by that much. So now that we know the floor to floor height, now we can use that number. So this number that's coming out of here and create a series that steps by that much. And we can select how many. So if we want five sets, it'll create it using that step. So now that we've done that once, we can basically do that to all of it. So this is the landing. I'll tap Alt. Let's see if first, well, this one. Then I'll tap Alt. The next one, which is going to be this one. Now, see the land. So now I'll disable the preview on everything back here. And you'll see that just using the slider, we have a set of stairs that is arrayed vertically, and we can adjust all of the parameters here. Okay, so this gap actually could be useful in terms of creating an elevator um, circulation as well. That's cool. The last thing that I would say is kind of interesting to share with you because it's a bit of a quirky technique, and I don't want to confuse anyone that is fairly new, but let me show you. So we have all of these landings, but we can definitely see that we're missing one here at the top. So what we need to do is add one more as compared to everything else, it's already okay. And we know that it has to be this set. So what we need to do is copy this instead of six, we'll six plus one is seven. So that one needs seven. When you do plus one, it's going to do B as one, and it'll be six plus one equals seven, and seven is going to be the array just for this one. So that's one additional one, and that finalizes the design. So hopefully you found this video interesting and this tutorial useful. I will be posting more videos like these, so make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, check out the website capetidavid.com to download the script to see if you kind of did the same thing or if you want to follow along to make sure you get everything right. I also have other resources, but other than that, thank you for being here and I hope to see you on the next one.